Hello and welcome to Friday Special. I'm Farooq Pitafi. We are after years of uh, complaining about each other, the blame game that we saw, uh, too many problems on the diplomatic front. Finally, we have seen that Afghanistan and Pakistan in this year, in April, agreed on an action plan for peace and solidarity. After that, what we have heard from both sides, at least on official sides, uh, it has been quite uh, positive uh, signaling. Uh, when the new government came to uh, came in Pakistan, we saw the uh, foreign minister of Pakistan, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, visiting Kabul as well. And now we see that there is a climate of cautious optimism. Today we are going to talk about that. Today we are going to talk about uh, uh, the various aspects in which Afghanistan and Pakistan can work together. And I'm joined at this moment. I have the honor to interview uh, at this moment the ambassador, uh, Afghan ambassador to Pakistan, Hazrat Umar Zakhil Wal Saab. And uh, he's not only the ambassador, he's also uh, um, an advisor, a special assistant to the president of Afghanistan. And he was, uh, before coming here, he was also uh, the finance minister of Afghanistan. So we have quite a range of uh, discussion that we can have. Um, uh, Excellency, thank you very much. For Pleasure. Joining us. Pleasure is mine. Uh, sir, uh, let us start with the economic matters instead of anything else. Sure. Uh, the, trade of Pak uh, the trade between Afghanistan and Pakistan uh, was somewhere between $2.5 billion. It, it is an estimate of one of our chambers of commerce. And it seems to be declining. By the start of this year, we saw that it had declined to $950 million. What exactly is contributing to that? I think interference, I think impediments, um, political and other impediments to trade and transit over the past few years certainly have affected both bilateral trade, but significantly Pakistani exports to Afghanistan. Um, you are absolutely right. Some 10 years ago, um, Pakistan exports to Afghanistan was over $2 billion, uh, and it reached $2.5 billion, uh, but then started to decline, uh, becoming half that or less than half that. Um, we did work, I personally did work, push both sides uh, to at least spare uh, trade and transit from politics. Uh, I'm glad to uh, say that uh, that push did work, particularly this year, at the beginning or, um, of this year, about um, around uh, March, April. Um, some of the impediments were removed, uh, and as a result, it's rebounding. Um, certainly the figure, the bilateral trade figure this year will be higher than it was uh, a year ago, um, in two years ago, and it's, it will continue to go higher. But imp some impediments still um, are there um, right. on both sides, to be okay. fair. Um, when, and we do uh, need to work. Excellency, when you talk about impediments, are you talking about uh, tariffs? Are you talking about some other bottlenecks? Most, most of them are non-tariff barriers. No, they are not tariff barriers. They are non-tariff barriers. There is interference by uh, organizations that ha are not responsible for trade and transit uh, to interfere. There is also, um, again, uh, unnecessary uh, delays uh, in crossing points. Uh, last year, um, in particular, there were um, arbitrary closure of crossing points, um, extended ones, um, which not only affects trade and transit in that particular moment when disruption happens, but it also, um, uh, again, um, makes this, this trade and transit routes unpredictable, and therefore our traders shift to other routes. And that's what had happened. A lot of our trade, um, a lot of our transit, and as a result also trade, actually shifted to the northern countries and also significantly to Iran. Right. Uh, before coming here, uh, there's a reason why I asked about the impediments, because I asked certain traders as well. And one complaint was uh, Afghanistan's quarantine laws. Uh, the way one has to actually proceed, uh, usually any perishable item that goes there, if it has to comply with that, usually perishes. So that becomes a problem. Do you think that uh, in coming days there can be some negotiations of work on those we laws? Have, we have well? negotiated. I think um, there, is, there, is, there are enough agreements on the uh, 
uh, sort of providing uh, the facilities and as well as um, the environment and where trade and transit flourish. Uh, but like I said, um, uh, there is not a lack of agreement, it's a lack of implementation. Um, even today, um, there, are, there are perishable goods. Um, yesterday, in this particular room, I met some traders uh, who complained about Thorham, in which perishable goods, fruit and vegetables, are unnecessarily delayed um, by 24 hours. Okay. So, if by 24 hours in this weather, you delay grapes, mm -hmm. uh, they do, do perish. Yeah. And half of them, are in most cases, gone, or sometimes all is gone. So those are the type of things that we should not be subjecting each right. other's goods to. Right. And uh, that is important, sir, because uh, both the countries actually uh, share a very long border. And they have been uh, together for quite some time, even though we have been complaining about each other as well. Uh, fortunately now, uh, and I'm going to, uh, by the way, come back to economics, but sure. first let me talk about the relationship improvement between the two sure. countries. Uh, we finally saw Afghanistan-Pakistan action plan for peace and solidarity. Uh, five uh, action uh, working groups were also formed. Where do you think is the trajectory heading at this moment? Well, it has provided a, um, a framework for interactions um, in the important areas of security, intelligence, refugees, um, peace, um, uh, and also economy. Um, those meetings are taking place. Um, um, as we are speaking, just tomorrow there will be a delegation of religious scholars visiting uh, Islamabad in the context of APAPs. So those are encouraging because um, again, any um, improvement in relations, any actions that needs to be taken has to be preceded by interactions and talks. Right. Right? It's talks that leads to, um, again, progress and in, in, in actions. Um, and therefore, in that sense, it's a positive thing, no doubt about it. But at the end, up ups in any other bilateral um, agreements that we have, in engagements that we, ha we have, will be judged by, uh, by the substance okay. uh, of, of the actions rather than by what is said and what is written. And, and therefore, um, again, we'll have to wait and make that judgment um, when that happens. But at this stage, this environment itself is, I think, a much improved and, environment compared and to where we were. you to be preceded by talks. Yes, exactly. And the problem, again, it comes to substances that for 16 years, we have been talking about talks for quite some time. Yes, I agree. Do you think this time is different? I think what we've been able to do is to sustain interactions. Between Afghanistan and Pakistan, the difficulty has been that we make some progress, at least in the level of talks, but then something happens and everything drops uh, back to square zero or whatever, or below zero. Um, um, but in the past uh, year or so, uh, we've been able to maintain it. Um, so that interaction has been consistent, it's been regular, and it's leading to higher level and higher level and higher level. In 2018, if you look at it, again, the National Security uh, Advisor of Pakistan visiting uh, Kabul, um, the chief of the army staff uh, visiting Kabul twice in the past one year, um, the prime minister of Pakistan visiting Kabul, um, the um, director general of intelligence um, visiting Kabul, um, again, our national security advisor, our uh, director of national intelligence, our ministers visiting Af um, uh, Pakistan, Pakistan, and then again, other lower level um, uh, interactions and visits and all that uh, were something that they were not in 2016, for example. Not a single of these happened in 2016. Um, in um, 2017, again, very few of these happened. But in 2018, you see quite a lot of it. Um, so that means that we have been able to sustain this. Okay. And yeah. that should give us the uh, confidence and the uh, reassurances that if we if we continue on this path, uh, then eventually, hopefully, we will also see actions that satisfies both time, both sides. Sir, well, that is a very good answer. But you add too many caveats here. 
uh, repeatedly if and if that happens. Yes. And uh, you earlier said that uh, whenever we are talking, something happens and we drop. So is there a structural flaw in the construction of these talks that we don't see that we are living in a very interesting uh, region, a region which is uh, a rough neighborhood and things might happen in Pakistan, your country, elsewhere. So we have to continue talking. Without talking, we will not be able to overcome these matters. No, so structural flaws is not uh, the reason for it. I think it is the, uh, it's the an environment of mistrust uh, in a very long um, sort of period of uh, mistrust. To overcome that is not um, an easy one. And I, the reason I continuously say if any interactions that have happened, um, it could have been derailed um, at any particular moment. Uh, because I was personally involved in this and personally involved in pushing on both sides. Um, and in some of uh, those interventions and involvements have saved um, the day. Um, and that's what I'm saying is that, uh, let's say, uh, if, let's say, the, those personal interventions and involvements in persuasions on both sides, if for some reasons, uh, that was not there in that particular moment. Uh, then things could have derailed and we could have been back to that uh, square zero. Uh, so there is an effort now to actually continue with that relationship. Yeah, right? but that, what I'm saying is if there are efforts, if there is a well, I do see, I, do, I see no, um, I, I don't doubt, doubt the well on either side. There is definitely well on both sides to find a way forward, to interact, uh, to be positive, and to be able to contribute to positive relationship. That will is there. But like I said, that environment, um, which becomes supportive of that well, has not yet been generated. And therefore, extra efforts are needed, particularly by individuals in position who could guide these, these talks to indeed act when it's needed. When, uh, Excellency, you were saying that there is no structural flaw, I thought that maybe there might be some imagination flaw somewhere here. Uh, in, in our planning uh, in the past as well. Is there a possibility that we might be looking at it uh, with a wrong lens? We are trying to manage circumstances. We are trying to improve relationship. Why is it that we have never thought of thinking as potential allies? Um, I mean, I think you nailed it. I think we are looking at things from uh, wrong lenses. Uh, it's, 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 it's not one thing or another. I think it's everything that we are looking at from wrong lenses. And also, um, I think um, also we are looking at this relationship perhaps also from wrong angles. Uh, we look at it from angles of fear, uh, from angles of, uh, of, of, of mistrust, not from angle of potential possibilities that exist, not from angles of the common history that these two countries enjoy um, for millennia, uh, not from the angles of the desire of the people uh, of the two nations um, for really good and close relationships. In the relationship, the people-to-people -people relationship that had existed and they still exist, and building on that. I think institutionalizing such a deep relationship um, with a very narrow um, focus, um, usually again security focus and, and threats related focus and not looking into the other aspects and not building on that I think has been the wrong approach in this uh, bilateral relations. Um, and, and that needs to change. Uh, right. We do need to, to involve again a broader set of institutions but not necessarily all state institutions social institutions, uh, uh, most importantly, and they will be the one who will, again, more sustainably, constructively um, contribute to Afghanistan-Pakistan relations and its improvements. Right. While Ambassador, uh, we keep on talking about each other, uh, and we have been talking about each other for quite some time, uh, there is one thing that is missing even today. I remember back in the 90s, before 9-11, uh, when there was a uh, sizable uh, representation of Afghan refugees in Islamabad, how rich your culture is and how uh, rich it, um, the culture it was for me at that time because I uh, experienced it firsthand. But we don't actually put an effort to introduce each other to each other's cultures, do we? 
I, I, well, I think um, we have, we don't even need to introduce um, each other culture. Um, we have, um, we have a lot of commonalities already. Yeah. Um, um, uh, already part of, big part of your culture is our culture, big yeah, part indeed. of our culture is your indeed. culture. But um, those, and uh, we, we need to look into, we, we, you know, a lot of your cultural icons, mm -hmm. um, if you look, look at them, yeah. they have Afghan roots. Right. Huh? Um, Nasrat Fat Ali Khan, uh, I mean, look at the roots. Uh, where was he from? He is uh, from, you are prime minister of, 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 of current prime minister. I mean, look at his yeah. roots. Uh, goes I've, back to Afghanistan. I've extensively so, studied yeah. history of Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah. So, but so, it is such a rich culture, it's such a big culture. Uh, in, introduction to certain aspects of it or limited scope of it yes. is something that might be keeping us uh, behind in building relationships. We, we do need, absolutely. I mean, I think we do need to do more. I think we, you see this, this environment of fear. Mm -hmm. We prevent, when, when this environment of fear mm -hmm. prevents us from free trade and transit, mm -hmm. then you can imagine that it, could also, it also prevents us differently from cultural exchanges. Right. I, uh, just two weeks ago, I brought this um, really world-famous orchestra to, to Islamabad, um, and it was widely covered, uh, very well received. Um, it is um, mostly female, um, small kids, uh, but um, fantastic. But it came to Pakistan after we, it went to the U.S., it went to Swiss, it went to Germany, it went to France, it went to India, it went to so many other countries, and then to Pakistan. Whereas and in, in, in Pakistan, certainly, probably a lot of people did not know about it. Um, what does that tell you? That tells you that if there was, again, an environment in which cultural exchanges, Pakistan, Kabul from Islamabad, even by road, is a few hours away. Yeah. And by air, is only 45 minutes. Uh, so why would, why would we not able to, 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 to bring? Yeah. Similarly, from Pakistan, I mean, there are cultural icons um, who are very well um, uh, famous and very well received in Afghanistan, and yet they've, they, they have not um, been there. Uh, but those who have been there, those who have been, and particularly, again, uh, from the uh, Pashtun, uh, because there, there is a commonality between Afghanistan and the large Pashtun populations on both sides, so those exchanges are taking places. Right. But mostly people by people, not so much encouraged and supported and sponsored by the government right. or institutions that they should be doing. And, and uh, you think that Pakistani culture c has the potential to be introduced in Kabul also, elsewhere in it Afghanistan? It is already introduced, but what I'm saying is it could be certainly I mean, promoted and yeah. actively, definitely, and I think there will be, it will be very well received. Now, it is more than once that you have mentioned the culture of fear. And I want to understand how can we actually bring down the culture of fear. I, I think I already responded to that. Um, first Elaborate of all, uh, I, I, I think first of all, I think we need to have a broader view of this relationship, not a narrow view of this relationship. Afghanistan should not be viewed as a threat, to, as a potential threat by Pakistan, mm -hmm. but as a potential friend, mm -hmm. a very close friend. Mm -hmm. um, Is that possible? Why not? Why 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 not? Yeah. Um, so uh, with due respect, when I listen yeah, to of you, course, of course. I, I realize that there is a lot of space yes. for cordiality, yes, for ab better relationship. Absolutely. But we, when I look at the mutual media, our media, your media, yes, especially, especially your media, yes. I see very aggressive overtones. And it seems that there is this distrust, and which is deeply entrenched, and it is not going to go away. I, I don't believe that. Um, it's, it's, it's media on both sides, not necessarily on Afghan side, Pakistan side. Also, uh, I, I tell you why I'm saying I, that, our, especially your media. Yeah. Our media is so, uh, you know, introvert that it doesn't spare any time for foreign relations. When it does, it, it is not very positive. It usually talks about, uh, you know, local politicians. Yeah. When, when it does, it's not very positive. I do watch it with interest and all that. I think there is negativity on that. I've seen instances in, on both sides where really staunch critics of Afghanistan here, really staunch critics of Pakistan, when there's a possibility of Afghanistan-Pakistan interactions, it's within one meeting that, that, that negativity melts away. And that's because what it brings us as people, when we see 
in meet, we have perceptions about each other. Mm -hmm. But when we meet, that negative perception, whatever it is, mm -hmm. because, because there is a commonality between us, mm -hmm. there is a, not only in way of culture, not only in way of, um, of common interest, but also in way of thinking mm -hmm. and all that. And when we get to know, mm -hmm. then that suspicion of mine mm -hmm. about you melts away in yours, melts away about me. Here in Pakistan, there's a common perception that um, we view Pakistan as an enemy, that we, we, have, we give a preference to India over Pakistan, that we, um, uh, God forbid, um, uh, we wish you uh, bad, and that if, if there is a disaster in Pakistan that makes us happy, that's the perception, okay. and vice leave, versa. Le vice leave versa. the last two yes. uh, away, right? Uh, let us not focus on sure. them. But these two aspects, A, perceiving Pakistan as potential threat, that you have almost conceded that there is such a of perception course. on both of sides. Of course. And secondly, the uh, role of India yeah. in fom uh, whether fomenting such kind of uh, culture where we have distrust, yes. is it not a genuine concern? No, here? it is not. Why not? Because, because if, let's say, who historically, culturally, religiously, linguistically, um, geographically closer to us, is it India, is it Pakistan? I would like to say Pakistan. It is Pakistan. It's, it's, it's very obvious. If with this proximity, you... Pakistan believes that we prefer India over Pakistan, then it's Pakistan's failure. Okay. Yeah. It is Pakistan's failure. You have to, you know, we have to look at it this way. Why, why this brother of mine? You know, similar names, similar language, similar culture, similar history, similar all that. And yet, um, if, if my perception is even correct, mm -hmm. then there is something wrong I'm doing. That, that, that might is, be the case, Ambassador. That, that. Uh, uh, Excellency, yeah. that might be the case. Sure. But uh, when I talk to, uh, you know, I'm very frank uh, yeah, about sure, these things. Be, and uh, with Pakistanis, my own, uh, you know, uh, country fellows, I'm as uh, frank. Absolutely, please, please. And when I talk to them about this po potential failure, yes. they say that this country, Pakistan is not a rich country. Yes, of course. It has been struggling for yes. quite some time yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. But it has uh, hosted refugees. No doubt. Uh, uh, somewhere between 2.5 to 3.5 million. Six or 5 billion, a million at one right. point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and even if then we are failing, Yes. Then there might be something wrong, not at our end. Perhaps on the other side, on the perception, or somebody might be actively sowing the seeds of distrust. Yes. Well, first of all, if the belief there is that, that the Afghan mindset, mm -hmm. we are a nation, we are a country, but that collective mindset mm -hmm. could be manipulated and guided by a third force against you, which doesn't serve us, then, then you are questioning the intellect of Afghanistan and of Afghans. As a nation, we cannot be convinced by anyone, by any force, to act against our own national interest, which is in closer, best relations with Pakistan. So, this perception, I do hear about it. No, but, but, but the fascinating, no, th no, fascinating thing about interviewing a first-rate intellectual like you is that one can talk about so many things, and the scope is unlimited. Sure. You know, I understand but, but look, this but feeling. I'll come, I'll, I'll come to it. But at this moment, America is saying that maybe their thought process, America is one of the smart people yes, sure. of the world. Yeah. Their thought process was manipulated by Russia during the election. So it is not as if that nobody can manipulate anybody. Yes. I understand people are intellectually very sound in South Asia. No, 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 no but let me, let, me, let, me com let, let me complete my answer. Let me, let me complete my answer. Let me complete. So, so to say that they are there to manipulate us, mm -hmm. to guide us against you, you will be questioning our intellect. No, we are smart enough to know what is in our best interest. But sure. If their things are not going well, 
between us, then an environment is created there that, that whatever steps in death relations is taken, you will perceive it as something that distances. I'm, I'm, I'm not unique in this thinking. What I'm saying is something very genuine, and it's genuinely Afghan desire to have the best of relationship with Pakistan, a relationship in which Pakistan becomes supportive for peace and stability in Afghanistan, a relationship in which, in which Afghanistan does the same. That, that we see your peace and your stability in our best interest and in something that helps our stability and peace. And then Pakistan sees stability and peace. And of course, we need to treat each other as sovereign nations. Yeah. And as sovereign Indeed. nations, we can have a relationship with, with anybody. Right. And India, therefore, is not an exception. Mm -hmm. With India, with China, with this, with that, we could. Yeah, as long as we don't use, uh, allow we anybody allow to use us you. against each other. Use. That, we need to trust the intellect of a nation. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to trust the in intellect of the leadership who, who is in charge because no leader would want to fail. Any leadership in Afghanistan who pursues a policy of animosity towards Pakistan is destined to fail. And who would want to be a, a, a failure? Nobody would want to. And that we need to trust that those intentions, not this, if, 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 if you come to me and say, well, we do this out of brotherhood and this and that, that's not convincing enough. If, if, if I come to you and say that that's not convincing, but if I convince you that I want the best relationship for my own national interest, and here is the reasons why, here is, then you, 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 you can trust me that, yes, I'm genuine, and I'll trust you that you are genuine. And it's, the good thing is that right now between Afghanistan and Pakistan, it's that type of conversation that we are having. We want a, a, a constructive, positive role towards Afghanistan, Pakistan's role towards Afghanistan, not, uh, not out of Pakistan's generosity or... Uh, out of national out interest. Of, but out of your own national interest. Absolutely. The situation in Afghanistan mm -hmm. has hurt you economically, it has hurt you um, security-wise, mm -hmm. and it has also hurt your image, international mm -hmm. image. And that's not serving Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we would like to see Pakistan in which we are contributing mm -hmm. to your economy, mm -hmm. our peace is contributing, our stability is contributing to your economy, that, uh, that we are contributing to your sense of security, Okay. Yeah, you do have security, but the sense of security certainly is, is not completely there yet. Um, and we do want to contribute um, to, uh, again, uh, other aspects, um, particularly uh, your international image, mm -hmm. that it does not become what it is today, which is also in turn affecting economy no, and everything uh, else uh, 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 Ambassador, uh, my Excellency, I understand your answer. And if I'm allowed to summarize what you said, sure. uh, let, us, uh, let us not leave a vacuum for anybody to exploit. Right? Absolutely. But Absolutely. Uh, regarding Pakistan's image, I think when it comes to national interest, Pakistan will be able to actually look at its own image yes. and take care of it. Yes. Um, the only, uh, while talking to you, the only image that concerns me is Pakistan's image in Afghanistan and Afghanistan's image in Pakistan. Of course. Uh, uh, it started with a discussion about the media. Yes. Is there a possibility that the media can have a dialogue? Absolutely. So that Absolutely. Uh, I understand how media works. I'm a journalist, right? Uh, on television, whenever you spout some hostile words or something, uh, you get ratings. It must be the case in Afghanistan, it is the case in Pakistan. Is there a possibility that we put a premium on cordial talk getting higher ratings? Uh, my brother, sky's the limit to it. I think we need to, we, we do suspect each other's media. More so in Pakistan than um, in Afghanistan, and I'll tell you what the indicator of that is. Afghan channels are not on your cable here in Pakistan. They're banned from here. But your cables are on our channel. Okay. We do watch Jew, we do watch uh, Air Y, we do watch Khaybar, we do watch Mashrek, 
We do as you name it. PTV? Uh, PTV as well. Okay. He is well. We haven't banned it. Mm -hmm. Banned it. But you have banned in Pakistan all Afghan yeah, channels. Well, actually, um, there's, I, I tell you, there's uh, a struggle within Pakistan for other countries, not your country. And that becomes a problem when it comes to distribution of channels here, right? Yeah. And we have been trying to curtail other foreign content that usually saps our own local content. But it, it has hardly anything to do with Afghanistan. Yeah. I'm glad you have mentioned. I will look it up and I want to have a reaction from the authorities as well. But my concern was sensitizing journalists to each other. Yes. Helping them understand each other's mindset. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we, you, you said that uh, we are more or less the same people, right? Uh, so why not actually have a dialogue where we can actually help there each is, other understand? There are to a limited extent that I've seen the dialogue between um, uh, journalists and in, in, in media, uh, personalities on both sides, whether in Islamabad or in Kabul. I've seen that it starts usually on a tense sort of notes, yeah. but then it ends up with positivity. And that shows you that deep in on both sides, there's a lot of positivity in Goodwill. But we need to facilitate and provide that interaction. We need to facilitate and provide, again, you are representing media representation of Afghanistan and ours. Um, in, Again, we've allowed, actually, you have a better representation, yeah, but, uh, and, I, and, and uh, we have a very limited and constrained representation in, 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 in Pakistan. Yeah, but in but Afghanistan, not, I understand that yeah. in Afghanistan, there's the limit, uh, limit of uh, teledensity and the cable uh, yes. reach. Yes. So if it is allowed, it must be in Kabul, a couple of other places? All, most, you know, no, we are covered. We are pretty much covered all okay. over, all over. The media has really, in Afghanistan, advanced. Um, and, and I should also tell you, in the past two and a half years, mm -hmm. particularly that I'm interacting with media and all that, and so I do claim a bit of contrib contribution to that, the rhetoric of the media has significantly, the negative rhetoric against Pakistan mm -hmm. of the media has significantly subsided. It has Signi subsided. Sub significantly. Okay. That's a significant improvement. Mm -hmm. And Pakistan also has, it has significantly subsided. No. Uh, uh, Our problem is we hardly look outside the country. Yeah, exactly. So it has, it has, it has subsided, but I think more could be done. Mm -hmm. um, I think more could be done, and therefore, you know, uh, journalists, the media on both sides, once they take sides, mm -hmm. they definitely will have to take sides with their country, no doubt about it. But looking at other countries, they will have to look at it with an open mind mm -hmm. and try to be as objective as possible. They cannot be totally objective. But, but, but some objectivity mm -hmm. inserted into uh, the work of the media could, could take us a long way. Mm -hmm. I think because at the media is... is, is People do listen to it, um, and people um, do react to it, mm -hmm. and it does create perceptions. Um, and therefore, I think it, it has a big responsibility in how how these negative perceptions in both countries right. could could be initially subsided and then completely eliminated. Now let us talk about the nub of the matter. Sure. Right. Uh, 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 since we keep on complaining about uh, law and order situation, that is the key issue. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I see in APAPS uh, there was this focus, uh, the seven points that were agreed. The sure. first one was to support Afghan-led and Afghan-owned peace process. Yes. Uh, tell us what exactly does that mean? That is a peace. Um, the Taliban at the end are Afghans. Mm -hmm. The Afghan government is Afghans. Um, and supporting a dialogue between the Afghan government and Taliban. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Okay. And uh, how close are we to achieving that goal? Not, we, not very close, to be honest with you. But it's not as if we haven't made any progress. I think, I think there is the understanding of positions. Uh, I think there are, there are definitely in the background a lot of interactions, the details of which will be difficult for me to disclose to you. Mm -hmm. um, there is um, um, the test of wells on both sides, mm -hmm. the test of abilities on both sides as to what extent they do have the ability to deliver if the well is there. And, and, and 
exploratory talks as to if we do re get to the real talks as to how they would look um, and, and how they could be uh, taken forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the proof of all this is in the actual talks. Um, and that has not happened yet. Um, and it would be difficult for me to predict to you as to what, when could that but, be. Uh, do you have any uh, you know, timeline in mind at all, a rough timeline? Uh, I think not months, not uh, no, not. Uh, no, I think I think timelining talks yes. um, has been one of the mistakes, mm -hmm. um, um, because then it creates and generates suspicion as if we have something other than peace in our mind if we are just pushing this through a particular timeline. But the reality is that Afghan blood on both sides is shedding on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Dozens of Afghans get killed, mm -hmm. so the soon as possible. If peace comes tomorrow, that means it's gonna save about 40, 30, whatever, 50 lives tomorrow. And that is a lot of lives to be saved. Um, so now that multiplied by this, by a week, multiplied by a month, multiplied by a year, and then you can get the figure. So, so in a year, a few thousand Afghans, innocent Afghans mostly, uh, lives saved is a lot of humanity saved. Um, and that is how we should be looking yeah. at it. There, there is a reason why I'm, I'm talking about timelines. The Afghan elections, general elections are approaching. They're going to take place next year in April, I, I believe. Uh, so uh, wouldn't it be convenient if uh, some kind of uh, resolution can be reached before the elections? Absolutely. I think, first of all, election, mm -hmm. the peace must do nothing with the election mm -hmm. or before election or after this, election. We, we conducted and, elections and, in the similar plan. And, and, and therefore, five years ago. And, and therefore, we should not conditionalize it. And, but if we do reach peace by election and see Taliban participating, it's going to be huge. Mm -hmm. And what else better than the election that would immediately politically integrate Taliban into the political process and into the power structure within the country? All right. So at this moment, you are not too optimistic about no, the I'm, I, I No, I'm, uh, what I'm saying is I, I didn't, that was not, the intention was not optimism or pessimism. It is called realism? Uh, it, 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 well, you can call it realism, but what I say is that this is so tricky that I do not want to um, sound as if something is imminent mm -hmm. only to be proven wrong. Um, and therefore, I need to be cautioned. Um, we need to be... Um, in, in, in the peace process, the important thing is that the, the general public um, trust when we say that something is happening, they must trust it. Mm -hmm. and, and that trust increases when we say something is happening and it happens. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need, we, a lot of caution is needed. Um, we are working in the background, like I said. Um, there is nothing more important than peace. It's more important than election. It's more important than one election, losing election, more important than government. It is, it is, it is, it is the most important thing right now for every Afghan. Right. Uh, Excellency, there has been recently in Pakistan, there has been some controversy regarding a statement that was made by our leaders. Uh, regard, uh, na giving naturalization or nationality to Afghan citizens born here. Uh, but there's also this greater issue of repatriation of refugees. Uh, do we have any timeline for that? Although I understand that uh, peace building in Afghanistan is, uh, is taking time and uh, state building, nation building, they all have to work together. But do we have any timeline in mind regarding repatriation? Okay. You see, my personal um, uh, position on this is that I'd love to see all Afghans returning to their own country. Mm -hmm. and, and for that, of course, the environment uh, that needs to be there, and that environment is of peace and stability. Pakistan's greatest contribution at the end would be as to how it contributes to peace and stability in Afghan, uh, to Afghanistan. And with that, this refugee question is going to be solved. Mm -hmm. Remember, even relative peace when it came, millions of Afghans returned. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so you, at one point you have some six or five, six million refugees in this country and some four million plus did return, even with relative um, environment. So imagine when there is a full environment for them, Afghans will return to their home. That doesn't mean that they will not come back to Pakistan to visit. Mm -hmm. They certainly will visit. Mm -hmm. They have established connections. A big number have been born and raised here. Um, they've been part of the culture. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it is, again, already we talked quite a bit about culture. Yeah. So that's a culture component right there. It is. Um, and, and that binds us together. You see that potential is there, mm -hmm. but that potential has not been utilized. The refugees is a potential for relationship. The common culture is a potential. The common languages are potential. The trade is, these are potential. But we have not invested a lot in it because of the other areas that generate mistrust. When we make improvements on the other areas, we have an environmental trust. These are the potentials that will take us to the heights of the relations, inshallah. Sir, you just said that uh, ulema or uh, a delegation of yes. ulemas is coming to Pakistan. Yes. And that is quite interesting because for 16 years, yes. it seems that Afghanistan kept on fighting terrorism, Pakistan kept on fighting terrorism. We kept on uh, facing a lot of instability, but we didn't work together to come up with a joint narrative yes. against terrorism yes. and also to create some kind of uh, syllabi. Yes. To actually uh, work against extremism. Yes. Is there a possibility that now the ulema and the intellectuals can get together and find a common ground on that? That's needed. That's important. And we are ready for it. Okay. We would want to, in our hope, the Pakistani ulemas join hands with us. Okay. So what is uh, stopping both sides to come together and work? Well, right now they're coming. They will be talking. Uh, so they will my be hope talking is, about this. Yeah, yeah, issue precisely, well. precisely on this. Precisely right. what you described. Uh, there is a reason uh, that I mentioned refugees because the elections are, uh, are approaching. Yes. So uh, if uh, the repatriation is not going to uh, start immediately, and I understand that it, it won't, how does that affect the elections that are approaching? Not a lot. Um, we are not um, a very, if you look into the past elections and all that, um, every segment of the society supports a mix of different candidates. Um, so, so even if the refugees do not return, they will be fairly represented by whoever votes. So okay. it's not going to change that mix right. a lot. Right. Uh, there was this idea during the previous elections that maybe some people can go there, vote, and come back. They, they still do. Those okay. who, who still, of course, um, uh, do want to be part of the political process. They have done in every election, in every parliamentary presidential election, they have crossed and they have voted and they come back. And they, right. they certainly will do again. Right. Um, uh, coming back to economy, because, because at sure. the start I said that we have to sure. What are the commonalities in the economies? Uh, Pakistan has been struggling with its economy yes. for some time. Yes. And now it seems that we at least have a trajectory. Your country is, uh, since it was war torn, uh, I was uh, looking at the numbers and I realized that a big chunk of your economy is service industry. Yes. Can the service industries of two sides actually work together? Not only that, certainly. You see the location of Pakistan and Afghanistan is best suited for connectivity of Central Asia, South Asia and beyond. Your country is called the bridge between South Asia and Central Asia. And Pakistan is called the gateway. gateway. And you cannot be a gateway without Afghanistan yeah. and we cannot be a land bridge without Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And that has to be realized. The greatest potential is in the connectivity. Um, but the excellency, Pakistan yes. has been there for 72 years. Yes. After 72 years, we are saying that there has to be a realization. Why don't we have a realization on I, both I, sides? I, I think the, the, the potential, when the opportunities remain potential mm -hmm. and they have not yet touched lives, we do not give them the same value. You, Pakistan has not tasted easier access because of the lack of uh, infrastructure and other elements to the Central Asian market and beyond. Central Asia has not tasted mm -hmm. the, the access to Pakistan. It's energy rich, other resources rich, 
And it's huge market, again, not, it's not only Pakistan. When it reaches Pakistan, it reaches also beyond. With the exception, uh, perhaps, of Tapi and Kasa. Which has not yet been realized. So Kasa will, will, will indeed be a huge project mm -hmm. when it's completed, and a few million Pakistanis start to depend on it, and a few hundred thousand industries start to depend on it. And, and the, the, the resource countries, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, depend on the revenue. Right. We depend on the revenue from the transmission right. and all that. And that is when it will, it will become way more in the mindset of the people. Mm -hmm. Tapi is the same thing. It's been a concept uh, right now in everybody's mind. Right. Um, so we need to realize mm -hmm. at least a few projects to show to the people that there is potential and that potential is real. Mm -hmm. um, and that potential definitely changes the people's right. and lives of people. Uh, Excellency, I'm being told that we have to conclude the program, sure. but very quickly I have two questions. Sure. Uh, one is, of course, uh, I've been listening to the reference to trade between the two countries and how both can help sure. in connectivity. But is there a possibility that both countries can talk about the economy without re reference to the geography? And the second issue is that while the legitimate trade might not be taking place the way it is supposed to, there is a lot of smuggling. Is there a way to stop that as well? I think, I think first of all, when we make progress on the legitimate trade, the illegitimate will significantly subside. Um, when we block the legitimate trade, trade will find its hope its way to Afghanistan and from Afghanistan into Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And that is what gives rise but to... drug smuggling will never be part of any... Let's no, give it no, 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 it's not. It's not. Drug, I think it, 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 it requires collective efforts, not only by Afghanistan and Pakistan, by the whole regional countries, by the whole world. Um, as long as there is the, the excessive demand for drugs, there will be a supply of it. And as long as there is supply and there is demand, it will find but roots. Demand will continue. Yes. Uh, it might continue. Yes. It is not within my control to curb yeah, it or your, uh, in your control. But we can, of course, curb uh, the supply, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And there should be more work on it? The, in, in one element of the curbing of the supply against is, is, is helping with peace and stability. Okay. One, one uh, symptom of insecurity, instability, is that when you don't have control over land, then they will be growing this. Right, and that's a great point. Absolutely. And we have to actually leave it that. Well, uh, thank you. Excellency, thank you very much. Such for your a pleasure. Time. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, we as you have listened to uh, the Honorable uh, Ambassador of Afghanistan to Pakistan. This conversation has to continue. But in the past, whenever I have thought about the dialogue between the two countries, it felt that maybe, and I'm talking about a few years ago, it was generally referred as a dialogue between the deaf. Now it seems that we have started listening to each other. If we continue to do it, if we understand, empathize with each other's positions, maybe we can build trust that will last longer than anything that we have seen in the region so far. Let us hope in coming days we see that and we will uh, keep on talking about uh, peace between Afghanistan and Pakistan and the potential of both countries to be alive. This was today's program. Thank you very much for watching us. Take care.